Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we have ESTP and ISTJ shadow types. So what a shadow type is, is a dive into the unconscious. It's a type with the opposite functions as your type, but in the same order. So for the ISTJ it would be the ESTP and for the ESTP it would be the ISTJ. And so today we're gonna to explore how that manifests in these two types. And so Daniel, would you like to tell us a bit about you? Yeah, sure. Uh, Daniel Storm, um, obviously an ESTP. I'm a seven wing eight in the Enneagram. Um, been involved in this for probably, I don't know, five to seven years with my wife, Susan Storm, and excited to be here. Yeah, and they have a fantastic typology site called Psychology Junkie, and I highly recommend it. They have a great test in it and normally gets sensors correctly. And so I'm quite impressed. And Samuel? Hi everyone, I'm Samuel. I'm an ISTJ and I'm in type one, wing nine. Excellent. And Debbie? Hi, I'm Debbie, I'm an ISTJ and I always feel totally out of my depth in these groups because that's about as far as I go with this. You provide amazing commentary, Debbie. And Taco? Yeah, Taco, my nickname is Baf. So. Uh, ESTP Baf is my YouTube name, and not that I make any content, but it's a channel I use to follow the typology stuff. And uh, I'm married to an ISTJ already for 21 years, so uh, I hope I can provide some uh, of my own experiences. That's really cool. My first question for you all is, how does it look like when you are in your shadow state? So when does an ESTP start to exhibit ISTJ-like behaviors, and when does an ISTJ start to exhibit ESTP behaviors? For me, it's often when um, I'm starting to feel stressed or uh, feel like there's more chaos than I'm prepared to handle or that I'm responsible for, um, that I start seeing these shadow functions come out. Um, especially for me, my my uh, TE, my critical parent role. Um, I have five kids, so it's often chaotic here. And my initial reflex to that is to go overboard on TE and just organize everybody and everything around me to be like, okay, this is too crazy. Let's get everything under control and everything where it should be and everybody doing what they should do so that it squelches that. So it's often for me, very much in my stressed point of life that these things start coming out. Absolutely. Yeah, I usually just, it just happen when I really have to do something by, at the moment, I would uh, urge, urge to do something. So I kind of force myself to pretend that I'm more like an ESTP. But there are very rare occasions. It is a bit strange, but I can feel a bit of the flow of being more extrovert and trying to improvise things. Mm -hmm. I guess for me, it's the stress. What Daniel said there, just just trying to beauty. I uh, well, when I get I was looking at size, like filing cabinets inside my head, and it's when I get stressed, I don't have a chance to file everything, and it ends up in piles of paper across the floor. So suddenly, uh, my desire to be organized and planned just goes completely out the window, and I end up with starting too many tasks that I don't finish, and I get more and more uncomfortable and less able to function effectively. I find it a tough question, Joyce, because if I watch my wife, I cannot remember really that, that I saw her as kind of ESTP when she was stressed. And I do agree with, with Daniel that in times when I'm a bit stressed that I can become more controlling, but I also don't see myself really turning into my shadow type. So my TI now is trying to figure out if I agree, you know, with turning into your shadow. <laughs> so it's It's always good to be a little skeptical. And so with shadow types, people normally go there during times of stress, like what Daniel and Debbie mentioned, and it tends to manifest in temporary spurts of behavior for some people. For the ESTP, I noticed that they do order things in their outer world sometimes that can look like TE when they're stressed. Oh, there's 
We have another member. We have Flow State. <laughs> hey, Taylor. Hey, Taylor. <laughs> and, and so, Taylor, would you like to tell us a bit about you? Uh, um, my name's Taylor. I'm an ESTP, um, eight wing seven. I run a channel called Flow State, and that's what I got. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, under stress, Taylor. Do you ever exhibit any ISTJ like behaviors, like the shadow type behaviors? Um, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. From the hip, I had the same reaction, Taylor. I'm very skeptical. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't sound right. I think for ESTPs and maybe for all types, um, it depends on what function is being stressed. I don't think we full out flipped to being an ISTJ. I think whatever function is feeling the most stressed is going to have its shadow reaction. So like I was saying, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a TI auxiliary. And so when I can't, when there's too much chaos and I can't get to the truth and the bottom and the, the, the base, accuracy of a thing mentally i need my external world to become organized to help me with that and so that's when my te critical parent comes out so my kids are being loud noisy messy all over the place i'm trying to figure out all the things i need to do and mentally organize and get the the bottom line truth of my next action and i can't because there's too much going on so then i need to my te kicks in to help take care of that. And then it allows my TI, my internal function to be able to focus better. Similarly to like, if I, uh, you know, tertiary FE, if I step out of my comfort zone and go be, um, you know, really identifying with somebody else emotionally or, or trying to comfort them or um, just to identify with them. And I feel attacked maybe not necessarily by them but by somebody else maybe making fun of me my fi is going to tend to come out and be like yeah well maybe you have these deficiencies maybe your internal um sense of right and wrong your value system is messed up so i feel like that's what happens more often than not is the opposite function comes to the rescue of my primary so are you in this scenario what type of stress are you under is it like i got a bunch of shit to do or is it like the world's falling apart well fortunately i've never thought the world is falling apart so so that's a good start um no usually Where it's have when I have last one. year listen it could be worse we haven't seen the zombies yet okay <laughs> be full support to get excited yes, we have the action. <laughs> <laughs> I, that right that would be exciting um no it's it's um it's the stress of having a lot to do maybe not feeling like i have the time or the space to get it done in but knowing it has to be done regardless then yes i agree with that yeah that's really fascinating i agree that that's definitely estp behavior under stress i i wonder if it is your shadow functions or if it is just your extroverted sensing in a in a stressed out state so I, usually if i'm stressed joyce then i i withdraw so well yeah, I, I just came out of the gym i i the, the, the real gym is closed but i have one at my home and uh, i invite a friend because i like to train with others and uh, if i'm stressed i want to be alone i usually do a uh, the kind of activity so you could see that as as e well i'm overthinking the situation and and so that to me that's ti trying to find a solution to get out of the hole so that that's when i was really stressed i i would really go into my own man cave and try to solve it myself and didn't want anyone else that close to me that would be for me high stress yeah. you're an eight two yeah Maybe. eight wing seven yeah i i do that i associated that more with Enneagram behavior than personality type. Okay. But I think yeah. that when I do what was just described, I'm in, I'm intentionally sh shutting off some SE because SE will distract me for sure. And uh, 
I think the SC is the first thing to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what Taylor is describing when he says that that's eight behavior is that the eight, it's one of its integration paths is five or disintegration. Eights can be withdrawn when they're under stress. Like they can become more and more isolated and into five behavior when they're stressed. So, yeah. And makes sense. Yeah. I like the, the, the explanation Daniel gave that it's really specific to function because yeah. after you said that, it, it, it reminded me of a moment when I got overtrained when I was in a, in a selection in national team rowing. And um, you basically hit the wall because you did way too much and you ignored all the signals from your body. So basically you were not in touch with your SI and then just pushing yourself, pushing yourself to the limit until you went too far. And that's when you withdraw uh, and, and, and go into more SI mode because then you realize you, you, you've destroyed the machine and you need to, <laughs> to give your body rest and uh, train very light and moderate and skip days and just to get back in, in shape. So I, I like that, Daniel. That was a good explanation. That makes more sense to me than turning into your full shadow. Yeah. I'm curious about the ISTJs, about their specific like patterns or ways that they might see that happening with them um, and how, because I, I can see it easily in myself, but I have a more difficult time seeing it in other people and recognizing it. And I think that it's, it is helpful when we're working with other people, if we can see that happening to know how to help them to alleviate those stressors that might be pushing them there. So I'm really curious just to see from, from you two, like if you notice any patterns or specific ways that, your shadow functions tend to come out under situations? I guess it's when I've got too many different uh, demands on me from too diff many different places. I like to have, I like to organize my task list and organize what I do so I know what I'm going to achieve when I'm going to achieve it. If I get two different demands on me from uh, different places or three or four and I find it difficult to prioritize them, then it can all go horribly wrong very quickly in that uh, because I don't know how to prioritize, I don't prioritize any of them and pick off the first one that happens to come, whether it's the right thing to do or not. Other tasks, uh, other tasks uh, get abandoned. And I guess it's one of the biggest, yeah, what, one of the biggest huge stresses on me is when I forget to do things that, that I've been asked to do because I just didn't prioritize it properly and never got it organized in my in in my head. And it can it can rapidly it, it can rapidly go way out of control very quickly, and it takes a while to get it back. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, for me, I think it's more like when I don't have the opportunity to do the the yes side. So I just try to turn it to SC and I kind of lose the, the, the nest of doing things like, because I don't have a conscious SC. So I'll be more aggressive and be less aware, I believe, of my decision processes. It's kind of, it's kind of hard because it's just when I really need to do it, it's kind of, of a strange moment. Interesting. My question for Debbie and Samuel is when you're not given the chance to prepare, prepare or organize and you're in that you're in that state where you're just improvising like an ESTP when you're in that state for a prolonged period of time what happens Probably fatigue because we are all the at least my kids at all the time uh, uh, checking my resources so with SC that's not possible so I kind of lose the control of what I'm doing, probably. Yeah, absolutely, Samuel. I uh, I get stressed. I I get to the point where I can't check to see what if I've got my resources. I'm a teacher, and it can be uh, if I'm not if I if I'm stressed, I'll 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 turn I'll turn up to lessons unprepared, just hoping I have what I need and where I want it. And sometimes I get away with it, and sometimes I don't. Welcome to the ESTP life. Yeah, that's how I live my <laughs> whole life. <laughs> sometimes we get away with it, it. sometimes we don't. How, how do you cope? <laughs> we love it that way. Yeah. You, you yeah. learn to rely on or to trust in your ability to improvise, improvise. in the moment better than anybody Actually. else. 
It, it yeah, even yes. disturbs me if I need to prepare. If my boss tells me that I need to make a plan for something, and he wants really the, the step by step approach, it, it's just something yeah. I don't want to do. It uh, goes so against my nature. I'm so confident that I can do it without this whole plan with all the steps. That to me, it's too much like you you are forced to become a train at, at a fixed track, and, and you cannot move in the direction you want to move, but you have to follow this fixed track. So. It, it, it destroys my creativity, it destroys the, the improvisation because you have to just follow basically the, the course. <laughs> it is restrictive a lot of the times to prep things out too much. Mm -hmm. uh, I realized that if I had uh, would, was making a speech, I was way better off just winging it. If I knew what I was talking about, I could go up to the microphone and just talk and do way better than if I'd written a speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good example of how it feels like when a judger tries to be like a perceiver or a perceiver tries to adopt judger behaviors. Perceivers can feel like they're losing their creativity or they're they're kind of restricted when they follow too much of a, a regimented way of doing something in, in the SI. And judges can feel like everything's chaotic and they can get fatigued and stressed out and unsettled at the lack of structure in things. So that is quite fascinating. I mean, and similarly, when I'm, I mean, I was in the military for 11 years and, and that's nothing but structure. Um, but when, when we were actually forced into following a guideline and step-by-step -step procedures that had been written out, that made me tired, right? Because it's like, I'm trying to figure out, like, how does this always make sense in every situation? Because it doesn't always. Right. And so then I felt, you know, like, like Taco and, and Taylor are saying, like, I felt so restricted, like I was handcuffed and I couldn't, like, I couldn't actually do what I felt like should be done. Yeah. And so that's interesting. If you notice you're feeling fatigued or tired, consider that maybe it's because you're reaching into your shadow and it's making you tired. Like you're an ESTP who has to do too many SI behaviors. <laughs> No, but the thing is, if I feel tired, I just push myself further because I would find it weak to stop because I feel tired, you know? I had one time a training where my hands got so cold that I could hardly move in the boat because it was snowing. And that was the longest training that winter because I pushed myself to, to row further because I would find it really weak to turn earlier. So it's, it's for us, it's more, it becomes like a challenge, a challenge you know? Uh, uh, as a student, one time we stayed awake from Friday until Sunday evening, and everybody who fell asleep was not allowed to drink anymore. Well, that's to me, that becomes immediately a challenge I like. Well, some of the guys already fell asleep at Saturday morning. Well, I made it until Sunday evening, and I had my last drink then uh, before I went to sleep. So that's <laughs> the ESTP way, you know? <laughs> it, it is the ESTP way, yeah. They also correlate that with type 8 in the Enneagram, too. Whenever you hear someone saying, I don't want to seem weak. It's like eight language. <laughs> yeah. Second time. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's 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 true. I think ESTPs in general tend to be that way. And I think Enneagrams wise, they tend to be sevens and eights very often. And so it's not an uncommon behavior to see associated with ESTPs. I'm I I'm a seven wing eight, so if anybody ever tells me I can't do something, then that's when my eight wing kicks in. It's like, don't tell me what I can't do. Um, yeah. Regardless of, of my SI, you know, opposing function telling me I'm going to like destroy my body doing it. Um, yeah. I have to, I, I just have to do it. Yeah. What I find with SE is it's all about pushing physical limitations. So it's like, Oh, I can't do it. It's like, you don't know my limitations yet. Like, so it's it's testing the boundaries of what your limitations are physically. And it's like wanting your body to tell you instead of other people telling you. Yeah. Also, some of my, my eight friends, they say, um, uh, when you're tired, you're only at 40% and you still have 60% left. So it's just a mental thing. You know, that's a typical comment mm -hmm. I hear mm -hmm. a lot from my friends. And I think that like that myself, well, I know now where the limits are. I think it's... It is TI with ESTPs who know, who basically can define the, the boundaries. So we do know our limits, but we like to test them and to 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 push the bar higher. So uh, if you push yourself all the time, then at one moment the limit is not where it used to be. But 
you're just stronger you can do more you know? yeah I think there's also a lot of se you know the uh, we know sometimes that uh, there are consequences but we're just enjoying the moment so i was just having fun uh, by staying awake with my friends and trying to see how far we would get uh, not, not worrying for the consequence well if i look at my icj wife she's always worried for the consequences she stops after half a glass of wine because it's not good for her health she will might have a headache the next day and all these kind of things so always thinking about the consequences and that stops her from pushing further and uh, I don't have that. I just enjoy the wine and take another one until the bot is empty and uh, no problem. Yeah. That <laughs> I will see tomorrow. Usually it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's interesting though to also realize that I mean a lot of times in, in conversations I feel like about shadow functions, we talk about how it comes out when we're stressed and how it's sometimes viewed as like a negative thing because we're not as well versed in using them. But if we can get used to hearing those functions within ourselves and integrate them into our functions, it really helps us become a more healthy version of ourselves. So, I mean, if, if I can listen to my SI when I'm really pushing myself on an SE side and it's, it's telling me, listen, you've been here before, you know how this feels, you should really ease up so you don't pull the muscle, right? It's going to, it's going to create this internal conflict, but overall, it would cause me to be a healthier version of myself because then I'm able to really turn around and put forth that much effort again and have less recoup time by listening to it. You know, just I as one example. Agree. I think I, I see the benefits. So my wife cooks very healthy and I think for me, that's the reason I'm still in very good shape because I don't think I would cook like that myself. It would be beef and a lot of, yeah, fatty stuff which she sees as un unhealthy and would not serve me and uh, uh, another thing is that she is so organized you know that, that i can see the benefits of tea and that's why in the office i work with a lot of istjs and, and i'm usually the one who's interviewing for when we're recruiting because i really know how, how supportive they are to run the business and and to do the stuff which needs to be done in a very good way and a good example is when uh, I became father for the first time, you know, I was with my head in the clouds and just enjoying that I just became a father and it was fun. While my wife was already thinking about submitting our son to uh, to, to kindergarten, uh, submitting him to the primary school, you know, those things, it would not even have come up to me probably in the first five years. Uh, I would have been too late. And I see that with a lot of my, my friends that if, if they don't have a... a, a, a a friend or say a spouse with a good TE, it's, it's sometimes total chaos and they're too late for these kind of things. So uh, I feel many times chaos was basically avoided because my wife plans everything, thinks about everything. She wakes up and the first thing she does is going through the checklist in her mind, you know, tick, 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 what needs to be done in that day? Well, I'm just making my coffee. <laughs> I don't think about it. It just it doesn't, it, it doesn't enter my mind. Yeah. There's a really interesting lesson in that. So it seems like we integrate into the healthier behaviors of our shadow when we have someone else in our life who has those functions. So Taco, he has his ISTJ wife and that kind of brings those functions into his life. And so I notice when it's in a healthy manifestation, it tends to be we have someone in our life who is exhibiting those functions and we're starting to like adopt those in a healthy way. When it manifests in an unhealthy way, it comes out when we're stressed. And so I notice with some ESTPs, they get into their shadow state in an unhealthy way when they're in an emergency situation because they didn't consider the consequences for too long and then uh, it kind of catches up with them. It can be seen as an NI inferior thing where it's not considering the long-term consequences enough or it could be a SI thing where it's now like the last minute scramble to get everything back in place in is kind of SI in the, in the sense that you're trying to do like the step by step by making everything right again, which I notice one of the ESTPs in my life do, especially with finances, but for other ESTPs, it's different things. Yeah. And so Debbie, you wanted to say something? I saw you. You were so happy. No. When, 
You were so no. happy when Taco was explaining his wife. You're, you're like, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 totally, I totally understand Taco's wife and uh, wanting everything organized. And yeah, understand understand that completely. And uh, it, it's, I find it, I, I do marvel at, at people who, uh, who like you, Taco, can just, can just enjoy the moment without worrying about what's going to happen in five years' time. Yeah, it's like my wife, even to do something spontaneous, she has to put it in, in her agenda five days in advance and, and she can prepare herself to do something spontaneous. It's 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 a different world uh, compared to how I live. Uh, really true, yeah. Yeah, she's scheduling spontaneity, which is an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> it is, that's why I say it. I find it so funny. But it's just impossible, basically. It's so. I was surprised to hear Sam was saying that sometimes you can go with the flow. But uh, uh, I, I, I tried to feed my wife a bit more wine when I just knew her, just to get her more in the flow. But uh, I didn't succeed. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it comes across, and, and maybe Debbie or Samuel can confirm or give their comments, but. My wife just gets stressed if the if if some things are not organized. Uh, she can get stressed when my desk is a mess. Well, I need my desk to be a mess. I don't want it to be super clean without any stuff. There there are always piles of stuff on it, and that's when I fa feel comfortable. And she hates that. She wants me to to clean it, and otherwise she wants to clean it herself. And that's not allowed. I, I want my desk as it is. But that, those are one of the the, the conflict um, uh, points we have because I just refuse to. It's it's like my own territory, you know. I, I want it where how I feel comfortable, and to her, it's chaos and she, it's disturbing. And yeah, if she's really stressed, I clean it. But uh, usually, I don't want to. So that, that's where you see how we different we are in seeing the world. And my own analysis is I I feel so calm in my head that with the outside chaos, it doesn't disturb me. Well, she needs it to feel calm in her head. That she needs everything to be at the, its place, uh, to be clean. And you know, when she has a day off, she can. Uh, one of the things she really wants to do is to clean the house. Well, we also have a maid who cleans the house, but that's she really something she really wants to do, because it's never perfect enough. And she always sees spots the kids and me don't see. And uh, when it's all clean, she feels good. So. I'm yeah. curious, uh, who here has, uh, matches their socks? I do too. My wife always thinks I'm funny because I'm so particular about it. Um, but to me, I can literally feel the difference if the socks aren't matched. It, it I can annoys too. Me. It just annoys <laughs> me. And it's like it has to be the same or it's just wrong. Yep. What would that's, you attribute that to? An I, I guess, because uh, it's so an ENFP who likes to have different socks, completely different, and he, he really likes that. So <laughs> to me, it's something is off. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. I, th yeah. I mean, I would attribute it to SE personally. I was going to say uh, the, the way it because, feels, if you feel the difference, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just this. It's it's literally an external sensation that feels off it feels wrong and so i want to fix I it also have it colors you know if one is blue and the other is red i don't like it um, if, if my racing bike it's it's a, a red and black team so the set even the saddle bag the, the the water bottle my helmet my sunglasses everything needs to fit basically that team uh, i could not go with the blue helmet and an orange um, um, uh, sunglasses frame and a uh, black bottle that, that that would not fit you know it's so to me the yeah, se and i are very connected so it's basically the the, the se and i team to me yeah. well my wife doesn't care basically she can have an outfit when she goes at the mountain bike um which is just all different colors and also at the bike, it's everything is different, so, yeah. Yeah, very true. And so Debbie, what is your reasoning for matching socks? It's just the right thing to do. Uh, <laughs> I guess uh, I, I, I struggle when one goes missing. That, 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 really, that really does upset me. 
Uh, so I tend to buy I tend to buy multi packs with uh, and the, and the, and then so you, you don't know which one goes with which but if I've got if I've got odd numbers that that really does trouble me and if and if they end up in the laundry in different batches in the laundry that that that's just that's just dreadful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've been known. I've been known. I've been known to do laundry, especially just to make sure they even up again. <laughs> See, our, the, the, the the solution in my house because we have, uh, like I said before, we've got five kids, and that equals a lot of socks. Yeah. Uh, we literally have a bin, and we just put all the socks in the bin. And when you need a pair of socks, you go find a pair. Right, we so that way you can thing. make sure that that way you can you can get a matching pair. You don't have to worry about how many there are or if they're perfectly you know matched up. It's if they're all there, as far as you know, it's it's like Schrodinger's cat. They either match or they don't, but you don't know. That's exactly the sock system we have, <laughs> and there's only three of us. But I like wearing girl socks because they're low and they're thin. So I'm not above snatching my girlfriends. The funny thing is, in our house, uh, our son uh, is an E entropy, and he just throws his socks in the corner of his room, and it piles up. And he just throws them always at this pile. And then at one moment, my wife goes into his room, and she shouts at the us to to come to his room, and she points at it, <laughs> and he just doesn't care. <laughs> really, yeah. And if if all the socks would be dirty, he either would take one of the dirty ones, or he would go bare feet on on flip flops, but. It's, I don't it's do dirty not a problem for him. <laughs> I, I I really won't put on dirty clothes unless like there's a serious emergency. Hmm. I'll buy new socks on the way to wherever I'm going. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting to note how different types can have the same behaviors. Like they can like matching socks, but they'll have a different why for what's the reason why behind it. So for the ESTPs, they're so keenly aware of all sensory input that having unmatching socks feels weird. Like you can literally feel a difference on both your feet. And it also like, has to please her eyes, you know, it's a, it should look good. And uh, yeah. yeah, with the ISTJs, uh, it's, it's the lack of order. Eh? Like yes. we said, missing sock or two different ones which don't belong together. You know, things belong together, according to my wife. Uh, uh, one sock belongs to the other, you have to match. And that, uh, also stuff in the house, it has, everything has its own place. And if it's out of place, if I put something, uh, it, it's, almost, it, it's, it's not like autistic, but uh, some people might confuse it for being autistic, but it's really lack of order. Uh, that's how she sees it, it um, because it should not be there. And you know, that's how it is. Yeah. But some things really don't have places. <laughs> I mean, there's a, most of my stuff doesn't have a place. That's because you're a perceiver. But I mean, like, it, do you have, you would you have a place for your wood burner? <laughs> I did, or, but only because I have so many tools, I have to have a place for them, or I won't be able to yeah, actually tool, use any of them. The shelf is full. <laughs> I actually have, I actually have an old briefcase that I put all my wood burner and my tips and. Uh, extension cord, like everything. Tonight. It actually is, believe it or not. Yes, Ooh, I know. <laughs> I've had a handful of those myself. <laughs> <laughs> we want high quality stuff. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So you'll notice what causes Debbie and Samuel stress is a lack of closure with sensory input, whereas ESTPs they're like meh with the closure for the sensory input. Like when, when they're stressed, it's because of a different issue. So it, that's an interesting thing to note as well. Yeah. I get With, stressed just hearing about people being stressed about a missing sock. <laughs> I get I get stressed thinking about my living my life in such a way that I notice a missing sock. <laughs> this is a discussion I could have with my son, you know, when my wife is stressed and we think, okay, why is it such a big deal? But then we know it's like a, a landmine we stepped on and so we try to behave that she doesn't get stressed in future so because we wanted to be happy as well yeah well i like i like what joyce the point you're bringing up is is really good and it's a strong perceiver versus judger difference just in general um that perceivers love having things open-ended because it gives us the option for more possibilities um which satisf satisfies our perceiving first nature um 
to always be able to bring in something new and not have it closed off and done. But judges are the exact opposite. They feel happier when it is finished because then they, they aren't holding open space for it and they can move on to the next item or the next, you know, priority. Um, and it's, it's really hard for me as a perceiver to fully understand that mindset of being like, okay, it's done, shelve it, move on. It's done, shelve it. You know, um, I might finish a project and then a week later get an idea and want to go back and change it and fix it and, and modify it to this new thing that I figured out. Um, so to me, everything is always open-ended and always available for bringing back out and, and modifying. So it's, it's really hard to get mentally in the same place as a judger where closing it off and not going back to it is a good thing. I do appreciate judges and their ability to really put an end cap on something because there are times where I tend to, by leaving things too open-ended all the time, I, this is why we start a million things and don't finish any of them um, because we don't feel that that need or that desire to have that end point. Um, and then things do get really crazy and chaotic because you've got, you know, a, a thousand open-ended things that you've never gone through. Whereas the judge is like, no, this is all, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, and, and, and I don't have to look back at it. So I can appreciate it, but I don't understand it fully. Agree. Yeah. yeah, the TE organization, I can definitely see the value because you mentioned that then you, you, you have this suitcase with the stuff in it. But um, uh, I think a month ago, our son got stranded with his car because the left strut broke and at uh, the spring broke of the left strut. And uh, I went with the car full with tools uh, to his uh, place uh, and uh, uh, I fixed it. But uh, I was one tool was missing. So um, uh, I bought it, and then later I found out that there was a, a, a Torx bit. I had a full box of these things, but <laughs> it was not so well organized that I put it in the car. So then I think, okay, this happened so many times to me that I think I need something, I buy it, and then I discover I already have one of two of the same mm -hmm. things. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it would not happen to my wife. She's she's the star in supply chain, I always say. Uh, it, I, I, we never ran out of milk, out of bread. Uh, the, 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 filing cabinet is always yeah everything is, is stocked up you know it's incredible how she keeps everything in her mind and makes sure there are new supplies when we before we need it so yeah yeah my my dad's i think an istj and you go out to his garage and every every drawer on his tool chest is labeled and what's on the label is actually in the drawer which just blows my mind and not only is it in the drawer but they're all in order in the drawer like you know, and, and, and it's always all there and he knows exactly where to go to get the, whatever tool he needs. Um, and, you know, same thing like you were talking about with, with food and prep and, and my dad's always like, okay, um, let's make this, let's, let's make sure we have everything on our list even before we go shopping. So we don't get there and miss out something that we need. I can't um, make a list. No, I just go down every aisle. Yeah. And like, oh yeah, we need that. Oh yeah, we need that. Oh, that would be good. You don't see it, <laughs> right? So, so I mean, it's 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 interesting how many areas of life that it really expands into, and the differences. And um, even when I'm stressed, though, even when when I feel my my shadow functions happening, I don't make lists. So that's that's one thing I don't feel like ever really comes through for me anyway. I think about doing it uh, periodically, like yesterday. I intended to make a list yesterday, but I didn't have paper, so. <laughs> I made a list because I, I had to do a lot of business trips for my work. And uh, one time I was at the airport and forgot my passport. Um, another time I forgot um, um, all the sanitary stuff. There was always something, you know. Then the next time I forgot my tie, and usually you can buy this stuff, but it's just... I got annoyed by myself because there was always something. And then uh, I finally did what my wife always does. I also made the list <laughs> and it helps. <laughs> I use it as well because I just, I got really annoyed with myself. If you're at the airport, you want to catch a plane and you don't have your passport, you have a big problem, you know? And if it's an important business trip, yeah, uh, you don't forgive yourself easily for it. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I had it too many times. So, yeah, that's the exception I made. But if I do groceries, uh, 
usually my wife makes a list and I still refuse to take it with me and I memorize it. And the, my short term memory for these kinds of things is really good. So mm -hmm. I typically don't forget something then. If I'm traveling, I still use the same um, packing list for traveling that my mom made me when I was a kid. <laughs> like, it's got all the basics. So. Hmm. I don't really pack myself anymore anyways. Katie does that for me, so. Sorry, I was going back to what Taco was saying about the lists. Uh, you, you, you will probably laugh at this. I was in the grocery store this morning, and I knew that uh, I knew that bread wasn't on the list, uh, but I had to add it because I, I, I worried that by the time I got round to the bread aisle, I would forget that I needed to buy it and then go home without it. So I catch myself <laughs> adding things to the grocery list while I'm actually in the grocery store. Wow. Do you do you ever add things to the list that you've already done just so you can cross them off? Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you, can't, you, you can't you can't appreciate it. Don't like make sure twice the jokes. Yes. <laughs> do you see like Debbie's face light up every time someone talks about a list? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's another indicator of type. That's how you can tell someone's type. Like what makes them come alive when they talk about it. With with ghost state, sometimes he gets more excited when you talk about fun stuff he's done, like some exciting SE activities. He'll start. Yeah, exciting is really an SP word, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if something's exciting, that's the only quality it needs. Yeah. <laughs> but to come back to the list, you know, because sometimes it's, it's, it's not that easy to type because I noticed that ESTJs, they typically don't need lists because they have such a clear list in their mind. It's yeah. really amazing. It's, it's, it's just, like it's written for them. They don't forget stuff because they have a very clear list. It's, uh, I noticed it several times with ESTJs. So so it's not always that the STJs have lists. It's uh, ISTJs have lists, but ESTJs, yeah. I know two who don't need lists, you know, that's, but they have a list, but it's just mental. Yeah. They have mental list for you and everybody else around them too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they will tell you what you have to do next. <laughs> we will. <laughs> <laughs> Not comply yeah, typically. I, I feel that ESTJs, they, because they have an, any higher in the stack, they also like to improvise a little bit. So they do not respect SI all the time. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of my professors, they, ESTJ professors, they really love NE, and I can see when they are not oh, going yeah. through SI. The NE is much stronger than most people think with ESTJs. I, th I th think they're also really creative. One ESTJ in the team at the office and she has great solutions to to, to problems. Uh, really creative. Uh, so it's it's pure. Right. Any, right. They always create for any. Always, it's it's incredible. Yeah, and extroverts in general, they have a better ability to improvise as well because extroverts' natural world is the outer world. So even if they're a J and they're an extrovert, they'll still be able to adapt to their environment without a plan. Whereas the IJs are they're a little more structured than the EJs on a whole. Yeah. Especially if they're ISJs. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. that was, I had to clarify that. I don't find the ISFJs very structured, uh, Joyce. Yeah. I've worked with too many ISFJs to, now I, 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 I spot the difference immediately because it is just the lack of structure, which, which always, that, that's why I really associate TE with, with structure because yeah. the ISTJs are so structured and, and yes. it, 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 they give me the confidence that if I ask them something, it will be done and that they will do it, do it in a good way. So uh, I can really rely upon them while with the ISFJs, well, I find them extremely friendly Yes. Typically, they miss things, yeah. they forget things, it's chaos, they don't have a good structure to approach projects. It's, well, they it's, got it's, no it's a world of difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The yeah. TE with the SI makes them very, like, TE is just like about external order. So, ITJs are way more structured or organized than the IFJs. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a really good differentiator. I see more order with ISFJs when it comes to like how you need to deal with people because I feel that we have some things you need to do all the time to be a kind person, even when it's not always the best solution, but they're trying to be nice and they think that it's possible and it really is. Yeah, there's a structure to social order and interactions um, with ISFJs that... 
Uh, we don't really notice much. I mean, I'm sure that we ESTPs would violate it all the time and just don't even notice that we <laughs> piss them off. But I I agree. Now we notice it when it's too late, when the damage is already done, because our FE picks it up, and then we might even feel that we have to repair it because we don't want to damage the relationship. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the, the, the just ignore it and they'll get over it. That is sometimes the downside of being ESTP is we tend to be all reactionary. So the everything is in retrospect. So it's always after the fact um, or often after the fact um, when even a little bit of increase in our NI um, usage would help prevent a lot of the, the negative things that we're trying to react to and fix after the fact. Yeah. So with ISFJs, it's you're totally right about the social order. And I notice, like sometimes FE users can be kind of, or FJs can be kind of a little judgmental in their head when they think someone's unkind or un uncompassionate or like not following the proper, oh, like causing unnecessary drama in the social atmosphere. That that can like make a ISFJ very judgmental inside. They might not say it, but they'll probably be judging. <laughs> um, and uh, well, well, one last comment. Sorry, I take a, I take a while to think. So, yeah, that's another quality of NI or SI. They they are a little slower than any and SE because any and SE they're rapid processing. SE rapidly processes the sensory while any rapidly processes ideational content. Whereas NI and SI they take a little longer to. Uh, to structure things, but they, they try to structure, structure either the sensory or, or ideas. And it might take a little longer, but it's more organized and it's more thorough. So that's a, another difference as well. And so it's interesting how today we, we met together to talk about shadow functions. And what we ended up talking about was the JP difference. And I think it shows something. What we learn in official MBTI training is that one of the biggest stress stressors for people is the last dichotomy, which is judging and perceiving. They tend to be, there's kind of an opposite to the track element, maybe at the beginning, but for some judges and perceivers that that difference can either be very healthy, like you know what Taco was talking about with his wife, where he's able to adopt all the healthy judger behaviors of his wife, like eating healthy and having fully stocked things in his house well, or we still have clashes the the fefi clash uh, is there and <laughs> even despite my awareness of personality types and cognitive functions it's it, it's really yeah we're so different there and it's not easy to find common ground so yeah yeah that's that's gonna be a topic for another video as well i'd like to invite you back taco to talk about your estp and istj uh, relationship that, that's really cool <laughs> and so the jp it's a dichotomy most likely to cause stress to people if they're stuck in the other dichotomy for too long and it can cause you to go into your shadow state but as we learned today you can also be in a healthy manifestation of your shadow as well if you're surrounded by people who have your shadow functions and they teach you to adopt those healthy behaviors as well and, and so any final thoughts before we close the panel yeah, the way I see it is that if we ESTPs get stressed by doing these shadow tasks, yeah, then, or if you just dislike it and it doesn't energize us, it's, it's good to surround us with people who like those things and you basically combine strengths instead of looking at the negatives. So that's the way I handle it in the office and at home. It's uh, I see the strengths and it's cool that somebody else likes what I don't like and it's also the other way around, you know, with the, the ISTJs in the office. They don't want to 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 be in the middle of action when there's chaos in the office, uh, when when things don't go as planned, and or when there's a negotiation, they prefer me to do it. And uh, so that's how we complement each other, and uh, it works really well. It makes a strong team. Yeah, I love that idea of combining strengths. It kind of brings to light how typology it, it kind of helps with diversity and inclusion. So instead of tolerating each other's differences and kind of bashing heads, what we could do is combine strengths and really dramatically improve our lives and collaborate 
and win-wins and yeah. <laughs> All the things that make Effie happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay, teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> and so any final thoughts? I and find it really cool that, that uh, Sam and Debbie uh, joined because uh, you see so many intuitives in typology and uh, uh, you don't see that many ISTJs, you know, they're really rare. And sometimes I think, oh, wow, YouTube channel with an ISTJ. And then after one or two videos, I think this is not an ISTJ, you know, <laughs> I've seen so many in my life. This is, this is a mistype or I'm really wrong on something. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's cool to, to have you both here. Yeah. yeah. What I really appreciate about this video is that we are taking uh, sensors to talk things that are not necessarily about sensing. We are having our takeaways about other things, and that's amazing. Yeah, and thank you, Samuel and Debbie, for representing the ISTJs. There's not a lot of represent representation in the community, and that causes a lot of people to not understand what an ISTJ really is. And so thank you for shining a light on the, the true nature of the ISTJs, saying words that will really resonate with real ISTJs. Basically, these panels, what, what they help with is they help people kind of see themselves in, in the type. So um, imagine this, maybe someone's love of typology stems from seeing you and hearing your story and going like, wow, that is really like me. They might have read a description and went like, that's sort of me. But when they hear a person, they're like, it becomes so much more real. It's like when you hear a person's story, it sticks with you much longer. Yeah, you, you give soul to data. So it's, 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 you add to the to the normal way of, of seeing type. Like it's not just a two dimensional description, but it's a three dimensional person and that's invaluable. So thank you so much for coming out. And, you know, thank you, Daniel Storm, Taylor and Taco for coming out and representing the ESTPs. I love your exciting lifestyle. Whenever you guys come on, you, you tell me about your newest adventures. Like Taco is talking about rowing and you know flow state always has exhilarating adventures that he talks about that that just make all your senses come alive and the best ones i don't talk about <laughs> <laughs> yeah and daniel is married to susan storm the owner of psychology junkie and it shows because you just have a very great technical understanding of typology and i, I love how you're able to link everything back to it as well um, you both must have good discussions, Daniel. That must be really interesting. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah, it is. Until my NI gets overloaded and it, it needs to shut down and rest a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is really lovely. Yeah. And so Taylor has a YouTube channel called Flow State. You should go check that out. Daniel has a website with his wife called Psychology Junkie. And I'll link everyone's Twitter's down below as well. And thank you so much for helping represent censors in a way that does them justice. You, you're really doing the community good. It's really bringing revolutionary ideas and content to the space. So I really appreciate all of you. Well, thanks for putting it together, Joyce. It's, it's yeah. always fun to uh, see these other ESTPs because we don't usually like connect because we're out doing too many other things. So. <laughs> How did you continue learning? It was good that Taylor said, for example, it was my eightness. Uh, you know, it's, uh, these things are really appreciated. It's, you always, uh, with these discussions, you always learn something. Yeah. Thank you for having us, Jules. Mm. Thank you. Lovely to meet you all. Yeah. You. It's I so just come to these for Joyce's compliments. At the end. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're always ego boosters for the day. I'm so <laughs> like, I leave these things going, that's right, I am great. <laughs> Not that ESTPs have too much of a problem thinking that. Too true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you for the collaboration of minds. I really appreciate it. And I'll Thanks, see you George. in the next episode. Okay, thank you. Bye, everyone. Okay. Thank you.